listening to The Savvy Musician Show with Leah McHenry, and this is your secret weapon for success in the new music industry. Well, what a joy once again to be with you, Leah, on The Savvy Musician Show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Are you having another awesome day in the music industry, your own music industry? Yes. The, the one that you made and created and built, your little empire? Yes, my little tiny little empire that nobody knows <laughs> except for my fans. <laughs> yes, we've, all seen, we've all seen your little empire and it's in your little subjects, those uh, five rascals running around who every time I see a post, it seems like they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, they do that. What do you feel? Uh, bulletproof coffee. <laughs> Something. Bulletproof coffee. Oh, that's right. Are your kids very um, health conscious? I know I say that because I know you are. And mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Um, I, yeah, it's one of those things when you, I mean, when I think whatever the parents pay attention to, the kids end up paying attention to. Exactly. And they know I've, I have really struggled with certain health issues over the years. Like I am so into health and fitness. I should be ripped right now, people, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, so, right. and I'm just, you know, trying to overcome those obstacles, you know, oh, there's so many things, external environment factors, you know, there's diet, diet is obviously huge. It's like 80% yeah. of the, maybe 90% of the whole equation, um, sleep and, you know, then you have thyroid things and genetics and all those things into play. And so I'm very, very uh, conscious of just everything. I'm just, and, and it's very overwhelming at times, but they've certainly seen me, I mean, especially in the last five to seven years. I mean, I completely just cleaned up our, our ingredients, like things we were ordering for groceries. Right. I say order now, like that's a new thing, ordering yeah. groceries. Um, <laughs> And, um, and, and just supplementation and all of that. Yeah. And, um, I definitely, I like my essential oils too. Um, I don't think it's a cure for everything, but I definitely like them. So, yeah, I've about, I, well, I've heard about that. I've heard that that's, um, you know, a lot of people are really, I was surprised. Somebody gave me some, I went to NAM show back in 2012 at a sore throat and they gave me some and they said, you could rub it on your neck and ingest it. I said, what? <laughs> and it, it did seem to make a difference. I mean, it did, it did seem to make a difference, but I haven't tried any since then. Yeah. Well, it's potent stuff, right? It's like all yeah. extracted. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know how they do it, but um, it's, I know it's potent and uh, hey, like plants are here for our use. So I'm a big fan of plants. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now we're going to be, we're going to be talking about in this episode today, goals. Did your, do your kids get that from you as well? And do they understand that concept of how important, because I know I've, I've only seen it from a distance. And, uh, but you're pretty intense on the goal setting and the planning thing. Is that also rubbing off on the young ones? Yeah. I mean, they're really young right now, but yeah, we set out certain goals. Like when we do our homeschool planning for the year, we get, Hey, like, what do we want to accomplish this year? And how many lessons are there in this course? Okay. Let's reverse engineer that. And we're going to do that in this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, how, you know, if there's this many lessons to go through and this is like the end goal, how do we divide that into how many lessons per week we need to do? And right. it's funny, I think most homeschool moms do this unless they're of a different philosophy, but, um, but yeah, it's really basic stuff. And of course they see Steve and I doing a lot of planning all the time. Right. We have whiteboards sometimes just standing around in the house or in the living room, a whiteboard's just there. Uh, Cause sometimes we brainstorm and we've got Sharpies out and everything. So they're right. seeing it. They're just kind of immersed in it via osmosis. Yes. So um, I think there's a, a lot more is caught than taught in, in yeah. many cases. No, I think, and that's important. And, you know, I don't think you can separate the goal setting and the planning. I mean, any person that you see that's successful, especially in the online space, it's a necessary part of it. It's you got to become one with this sort of thing. You had asked not too long ago uh, in the group about asking people what their greatest challenge was about planning their year mm -hmm. and music goals. You got some interesting comments from that. Yeah, I wanted to get uh, your guys' feedback if you're listening. If you're in our free Facebook group, it's the Savvy Musician Mastermind. You can look that up and join. Um, I, I really like to get content ideas from you guys. I want to know what you're struggling with, what it is, so I can follow up with that here on the podcast. And yeah, there was a few really good comments back. So the question was, what's your biggest challenge around planning your year and your music goals? John said, uh, planning isn't usually hard. It's following through that's hard. 
Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Amen. That's everybody's struggle. Nick said, setting daily and weekly process goals that are measurable. I love that comment because he's got, he's onto something there about having something measurable. Right. Um, Costa said, keeping the momentum going when inevitably sales and attention slow down at Mm. some point. Mm. Okay. Um, Yeah, I have some thoughts there. Um, Is it Danis said, uh, Danis Michael said, for me, uh, I want to know, am I going to generate income for my music or not? All right. Well, that's that's legit. That's what the goals are for. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Don said, how to transition from a season of writing and recording to a season of marketing and promoting. I'll say right out of the gate, there are certain marketing activities that are going on 365 days a year for me, whether I'm writing or recording or not. Right. So I'm always building my page. I'm always running video views and I'm always got an opt-in ad going. People are joining my email list year round and I'm aggressive about it. So that is always on autopilot, whether I'm writing or not. So just to throw that out there. Uh, Megan said, a challenge I have is rabbit holes. And I, oh man, I see this all the time in musicians, shiny object syndrome. And it happens to the best of us, especially if you're entrepreneurial type of a personality. Oh man, it's bad. Um, So she has a a year plan um, and then fleshes it out with smaller goals. But then as I go along, I get lost in the details. And before you know it, my year end plan ends up taking two years. Uh, not because I get distracted, but because I don't know all the steps in a given task involved since I've never done that task before. So mm-hmm. taking something on and then realizing there's so much more to it than you thought there was and you didn't know that. Right. Happens to, uh, and that happens to me. That happens, uh, I would say, in any business when you go to say, hey, here's our annual goals and you realize, oh, we bit off more than we could chew. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm just going to read a couple more here and then... Uh, just so we can get a state of just right. where people are at. Um, let's see. Uh, Clara said, I forget to plan tasks because I don't know them. And then I don't write them down afterwards. So I don't really learn from it. It's also a question of tracking the forgotten tasks as- afterwards and tracking numbers. Um, I don't love planning. I suck at setting financial goals. I don't know how to break a goal down into little steps. I lack the motivation to take time to do it in all details. I begin to plan and then I don't know which things are concrete steps it takes so long, blah, 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 blah. Um, And then Tom said, I think for me, it's how to plan realistically so that I follow through with all my plans, but in a way that still stretches me in what I do and pushes me to achieve more. I think that's a fine line, something a lot of us are still trying to master. And finally, Lauren, uh, uh, Lauren Meyer said how to plan when So much of our work is uncertain, at least for those of us who are freelancers and have to take work when it comes in. You could probably speak to that one because you've done a lot of freelancing. Yeah, a lot of freelancing. Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, there's something, and I I think I even said this to to the Superfan Elite group on our last coaching call. Again, those who might be listening for the first time, I'm joining and I am a mindset and branding coach in Leah's Superfan System Elite. So in one of the coaching calls that we had on mindset, I told them the, the number one thing that I see um, lacking in anybody who's trying to do anything in the online space, music or otherwise, is the lack of aggression. <laughs> They're just not aggressive enough. And so what happens is then they get focused on these little details. Well, I want to do this just enough to do that. And maybe I'll do this. You know, how can I find that sweet spot for goal setting? Listen, I need you to be reckless abandoned. I'll tell them, I would rather come to you and look at your page. If I was coaching you and see you posted 25 times that day and me go, whoa, whoa, reel that back in hot rod. (laughs) That is way too much. I would rather do that than to have to come to you and say, you haven't posted all week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so much of this is yes. I mean, Leah's going to give you so many tools, but the number one tool we got to get worked out first is you in your head. You got to know that you got to go for it. You're going to have to go full on. That's a challenge, Lee, as you know, for creative personalities there. Why do you think there is that reluctance, even though they know they're good, but there's that reluctance for them to go? Is it a fear of judgment? Is it, what is it? Yeah, I think it's a lot of things. It's just fear in general, fear of judgment, fear of doing the wrong thing. It's uh, fear of being vulnerable and transparent is what I see a lot. Like they don't want to do it. They're perfectionists. So they don't want to do it the wrong way. 
And so they'd rather not do it at all. And one thing I've learned, I mean, Savvy Musician Academy would not even exist if I had kept that mentality. I decided, you know, everything is going to be painful. Just choose your pain, (laughs) choose your pain. Right. So it's like either it's going to be painful because you're putting yourself out there, putting your heart on your sleeve. You're going to be vulnerable and you might get trolls and someone might tell you you're ugly and fat, but that better that pain than the pain of not doing it. And and the pain of not succeeding and being stuck where you are, choose your pain. Yeah. Yeah. When, when the, when the pain of, you know, your present and what you hate about your present, when the pain of your present circumstances is worse than the pain you think required to get out of it, <laughs> you'll finally become successful, right? Exactly. Because you'll become in, I did this in my own coaching group this week. I did a series called well, what it takes to change things. And I talked about basically the doubt versus belief. And if you doubt something, in other words, if you doubt the principles that govern achievement and you doubt your ability to do them, and if you're governed by that sort of skepticism, then you're going to tolerate your circumstances. You're just going to learn to live with it. We say that, right? Learn to live with it. But if you have belief, in other words, if you believe there are principles that could get you where you want to be in your music business, and if you believe you have the ability to do them, that belief will cause intolerance to your present circumstances. And that's going to drive you out. And so I think that's what's so important about things like not just the courses and stuff that you do, but even the Savvy Musician so show is that we're putting horseshoes in their boxing gloves. You know, you're equipping them with more and more tools. And, you know, guys, if you walk away from this podcast and you just get one little nugget, man, it was worth the 30 or 40 minutes that you spent. You know what I mean? And you extrapolate that. I'm sure, you know, Leo, you've spent thousands of dollars and hours on courses and some of the stuff you were just repeats of things you already learned. Some of the stuff, yeah, you didn't, you only got one thing out of, but that one thing you got out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> may have revolutionized that business altogether. Oh yeah. I've spent money on stuff where I, I didn't think I was going to get too much, but the couple of golden nuggets made a lot of money from. <laughs> so, you know, it's just great to know. That. And, and I say that even in my music business, like I was like, man, that just, for me, thinking of my music business in terms of an e-commerce business, instead of selling just digital music, that was a game changer. And I don't even know where I got that gold nugget, but a light bulb went off and I was like, oh, I have to start treating this like an e-commerce business. That's what it is. We're selling physical and digital goods right. online. That's e-commerce. Right. right. I, I have to completely change my mindset about this. That means I need to become an expert in e-commerce for my music and my fans. So that was a game changer. So um, absolutely. I, if you guys just take one nugget away from these episodes, even one per episode, you are right. doing very well. Absolutely. And uh, you should always say thank you when someone does something for you for free. So there you go. Leave us a that. review. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, now, going back to the whole goal setting thing. Now, you are, and I just saw this because we just had a turn of the year. I realize somebody may be listening to this later on, but we just had the turn of the year not too long ago. And because of the personal relationship I have with both Leah and, and her husband, Steve, um, I got to see a bit of their planning for, for, you know, what was up and coming for the new year. Why, Leah, is it so important for people to plan their year? A year? Yeah. Well, I like to, I like to plan for a year, but I also like to plan for by quarter because one thing I found is that without a plan at all, well, you know the saying, what is it? Plan, plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right. uh, whatever that is. And, and it's so true. Like if you are just, if you don't have a plan, you're winging it. That's the bottom line. You're winging it. And a business cannot right. grow. And I say business, I mean, musician, anything, a lot of people, by the way, a lot of our musicians have side businesses. So this is very applicable, um, but a business or a musician or any kind of enterprise cannot grow. If you just wake up today and go, do I feel inspired? Do I feel like doing this? It just doesn't work. You have to have a plan. And I think musicians are so goal driven and because we're visionaries, a lot of us are visionaries. We envision the future. We, and, and we go into the future, envision what could be real. And then we come back to reality and make it happen. And the only way that can happen is if there are strategic steps to then get there. So, so you're dividing your year up into quarters? Yeah. So we have like, what are all the things that I want to do? And then 
you know, I, I look at, well, there's a process I want to get into here, but yeah, we, we do annual and then we do quarters. And I do that for myself. We do that inside Musician Academy and I do it for myself and my music business. So that means, hey, in quarter last year, uh, Q3 or Q2, I started a crowdfunding campaign. And in Q4 uh, was the album launch. So I made sure that they were spaced out a, a part enough to be able to properly uh, launch them and make them successful and have time breathing room in between for all the logistics happening and all of that. So th that's like a very high level view of it, but we can get into some more details here. Now you did a, just as a note, you did a podcast about your last album launch, right? That they can check out in the archives. Um, yes. So we, yeah, that's right. We've done a couple of episodes referring to, I think, both the crowdfunding campaign and the album launch, and we'll put those in the show notes. Great. So where do you begin? I mean, where does, what's your starting point? My starting point is I like to brainstorm. I just do a giant brain dump. I do a lot of brain dumps. I do, I do brain dumps weekly. Um, Steve and I actually have a, a weekly meeting. You can do this with your bandmates yeah. where, uh, we call it the visionary integrator meeting. Um, there's a great book out there called rocket fuel that we read. And it's, uh, you can, you can, again, you can apply this in a band or if you have a side business or whatever you do. Um, and it's really about the relationship between the visionary of the business and the integrator role. And that integrator is somebody who goes and makes things happen. They delegate and they are managing and they're, they're, they're a doer. They're, you know, someone who checks things off the list. Um, they may not be doing the actual activities themselves, but they're facilitating it all to make sure it happens. Right. So in our business, in Staff Musician Academy, I'm the visionary Steve's the integrator. So we have a weekly meeting where I just, I need to dump my brain or else right. <laughs> if I don't, I mean, I have so many ideas flying around that I, uh, I, you know, I, one of the reasons probably I don't sleep well, I have so many ideas. <laughs> so you know, I begin with a big annual, like I, I do, I do these um, brain dumps weekly, but then we kind of compile it all into what do we really want to do for the year? And I just put everything down that I wish I could do everything. That's even unrealistic things that like are obviously not going to happen this year, but I put it all down because I think it's, it's therapeutic <laughs> number yes, one. Yes, right. <laughs> and I share your pain. yes, therapeutic. And then, and then you can really look at, you know, what is, realistic. So be as ambitious as you want on without restraint on that piece of paper. Uh, we like to use a whiteboard so we can, you know, erase now, things. And, yeah. Not, not everybody's going to have the luxury of having a Steve or necessarily band members, but I do like that concept though. Um, maybe somebody can bounce ideas off of somebody else, a friend or, or somebody yeah. who's, you know, spouse or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just to have that, especially, and if you can have somebody, the integrator, as she described, um, that person who kind of makes things happen, to set over again somebody like Leah, who's not an integrator, is more of a visionary. So in other words, she's going to always have a steady stream on the same way. It's a steady stream of ideas. So many things you can do. Like she said, you know, doesn't mean you have to necessarily do them now. Mm -hmm. But do the brain dump, like she said, it is therapeutic. It's good for you. And plus in that processing, you're going to grow even more. You're going to expand even more and you'll have some, you know, documentation of these things. And I guess, you know, it's kind of like I'll tell people oftentimes when I'm coaching them is because it's so hard for them to make a specific decision about their future. You know, it's, they're just, I don't know what I'm targeting. I don't know where I'm trying to get to. I don't know. And I'll say, listen, it's always easier to make a general decision than it is a specific one. So start mm -hmm. moving in the general direction of right. what your overall goal is. And we'll, we can adjust you. It's hard to, you know, steer mm -hmm. a car that's parked. So let's get you moving in a general direction. You can always refine it. You can always adjust it. Plan in pencil. Like you said, you've got whiteboards. Whiteboards are erasable. Mm -hmm. So just that's because why we it's on the them. whiteboard. Yeah. So you can change things and, and you're going to, you're going to feel like you're, taking some mm -hmm. control. I think there's a psychology there. That's, that's, really there is. And just so you know, just as a little tip, um, when we've, when I've been brainstorming and I write a bunch of stuff on the whiteboard, we take a, a screenshot of it yes. and, and then I save it on my phone. We put it in Dropbox in a folder or something like that, where I can just go back to look. So I don't have to worry about forgetting anything. Right. So whiteboard or paper, whatever it is, just screenshot it. So you don't lose it. 
Um, and then there's, there's other, th- so once you have this huge brain dump of ideas, you're like, Oh, I want to do this and this and this and this. And so many things. You're, and the next step is you got to start thinking about where are you at right now? And right. what is it, What is the one thing, if you could just do one thing and accomplish that this year, what would it be? And this applies if you're listening to this in January or September, I don't care what time of year it is. There's, there's, this is always a good time to do this. Right. So again, you can just start with the next quarter, right? So you can do this annually, you can do this quarterly. Um, so where are you at right now? What aligns with your primary desire? You need to consider things like your health, uh, time, budget, mm. all of these things. Because like for me, for example, I really do want to do a tour one day. I'm thinking 2020. But uh, this year, I am really focused on dialing in my health. And right. For that, I have to be very regimented. That means I have to have a very strict morning and evening routine. I'm in bed. I have to be in bed by a certain time. Uh, one of my faults has been staying up too late. And then after 11 o'clock, I get a second wind. And then I can't go to sleep after that. It's yeah. physiologically it's what happens in the yeah. body. So I have to, yeah, I have to be in bed. I like to chill and hang out and read and, and, and check social media and stuff. So I have to be in bed like nine. And then yeah. I give myself like a leeway to... Yeah. So, you know, read and do whatever I want to do and just chill. Right. And right. then like, it's like, I need a long winding down process, transition, right? a transition. Exactly. So, and then I also, just as a side, here's a little rabbit trail, but as a side note, um, if you are going to look at your phone at night, for example, uh, if you have an iPhone, you can do, what's that setting where it makes it turn like yellow. There's a, there's a setting on there. It's like a nighttime thing. I don't know if you know about it, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it's cool. Let me actually find it. Yeah, you can set it so that it the blue screen turns yellow so it doesn't you're not getting all this blue light in your Oh, okay. Yeah, so that it doesn't interfere with your uh, melatonin production. Oh, that's So interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Um I'll find the I'll find the name of what that's called. Right. But that's a that's a handy little thing. Google oh yeah, it. Just, Yeah, that I think what it is is yeah, um actually it's called night shift. So if you go into your iPhone and into display and brightness um, you can set night shift. So I have it from 8 p.m. till 7 a.m. And you can you can you can control how amber or yellow it goes. So yeah. I have it I have it turned to the extreme, so I'm not getting blue light at night. Anyways, for all, all right. of you people who are into biohacking that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, consider considering things like your health. Like, what is the priority? So for me, it's not going to make sense for me to go on tour if I'm trying to dial in my health right now. Not the right. time because everything would be messed up all the time. Um, and then. I look at the reality of what can I actually accomplish? I don't like to overshoot and I don't like to undershoot. And right. as a general rule of thumb, there's always more involved in something than you think there's going to be. Yes. It's all, like I said, it, it, the, and there was a huge, there was a major theme in these comments and that, in that people feel like they've bitten off more than they can chew. Right. So plan for that. Right. So do put less on your list of what you want to accomplish. Yeah. I can see how that, you know, having that, what's the non-negotiable big overall goal you've got to reach this year? You know, because like you said, you know, we can get uh, distracted by the shiny objects. We can head down rabbit trails in our own life, but we feel like we're busy. So we feel like we're good. Whereas you could be busy, but you're not headed towards anything. And so it never really goes anywhere. It becomes almost a vicious cycle and you never really escape from it. You never get, you say, Oh, I tried what Leah said, but it didn't work. No, the plan works, but I guess you, you failed to plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't have, maybe, you know, you can have a specific goal, like release my album, release an album right. this year. That's a big goal. And there's so right. much surrounding that. I wouldn't even add anything other than that. Right. I wouldn't say plan the album. Well, unless you're doing a tour along with it, then that would go with it. But um, outside, like, that's it for the year. You know, everything's going to le- be leading up to there. All the launch processes and the planning. I like to give a six month runway into any kind of a launch if possible. Like you start planning the album launch six months ahead of time. You start building your email list very aggressively months ahead of time, not two weeks beforehand. That's way too late. So right. if that, in that case, nothing else is going on your plate except for that. Um, in this, this year for me, I'm not launching an album that I know of. Um, I had an idea for a, a Christmas album possibly, but we'll see. Oh, um, that's, it, yeah, fans have been asking for it. So 
I might work on it, but I don't have to release it this year. You know, I can start working on it and right. it won't be for this year. Right. So, but for me, this year was a revenue goal. It wasn't, um, oh, uh, based around an event. So you might have a, a goal based around an event, or it could be revenue goal. And how are you going to get there? Right. So how are you going to get there? I decided to break it down into, you know, I want a percentage coming from this source, this source, and this source. And right. I split it up and they're goals. And if I get anywhere close to it, I'm happy. Right. I don't beat myself up if I didn't get there. I just know, you know, you want to, you want, um, a healthy balance, I think, between really challenging yourself and setting sometimes numbers that make you feel a little uncomfortable right. and not being so unrealistic that you're kind of not, you're going to miss it by a long shot. I don't yeah. think that's really healthy either. Well, you know, it's, this is, brings up a really good point. The complication here and the difficulty with goal setting and planning is not in the goal setting or the planning. The difficulty, as you just highlighted one aspect of it, is the person themselves. So for example, they may condemn themselves if they don't do what they originally set out to do, right? They, and they turn on themselves or they hear someone like you say, six months, I've never planned six days, let alone six months. How am I ever going to get my head around that kind of life? I've never been a planner. My room's a mess. My closet's a mess. I'm good at what I do in making, writing music, but I can't, I can't get my head around that. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, that's, you're being eased into this. So Leah's giving you some tips here about how to, get your head around something. Yes, give yourself something ambitious, you know, above your reach, something that is going to cause you to stretch. We don't want to make it too comfortable. But then again, don't go too crazy. But then no matter what happens, don't ever turn on yourself. Don't ever become right. your own worst enemy because guilt and self-condemnation, we love to wallow in it, will never get you to your goals any faster. Right. If anything, it's just going to slow you down. Yeah, that's a really good point. We all, I feel like artists, we, we're very extreme in the way the pendulum swings. Like, huh, I just know from experience with music, you, you write something, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a genius. <laughs> and, then, exactly. and then the next day you're just like, I should quit. Nobody should listen to me. I suck. And yeah. it's just, you know, it, artists, creative people, we tend to swing in that pendulum. So uh, with goal setting though, I, you got to be really careful that you don't do that. And this is about grounding you and taking the emotion out of it and just getting focused on what it is you really want. And then don't give your, don't be hard on yourself, but also have some discipline to, right. to follow through. Well, you take us into the kitchen and show us how the sauce is made. You, know, you talked about these annual and quarterly goals. And you just mentioned that uh, for you, your, you know, revenue was a big one that you dedicated yourself to a year. Break that down for us. Yeah, so for me, um, my mediums are scaling, I'm scaling my e-commerce side of my business so that I sell a lot of physical music, physical merchandise. Um, I wanted to, so I, uh, actually I don't have the breakdowns in front of me, but uh, yeah, percentage of that is gonna be coming from scaling that. Right. Um, and I actually, I'm going to get into licensing this year and wow. thank you th to Michael Elsner who was on this podcast. He changed my mind about that. And I'm never afraid to just, you know, I, I was never like anti-licensing. I just have seen uh, a lot of bad things happen and a lot of scams out there. Really? I mean, yeah. pay us money and we'll submit your stuff to some A&R person and you never hear back from them. Um, <laughs> That's the way, there's a lot of these things out there or just like upload your music to this library and then you never, never goes anywhere. So it's, right. you know, a lot of that stuff. So I'm, I'm focused on trying this and mm -hmm. you know, my music I hear from some of these professionals I've talked to, they said it's very licensable. So I'm like, oh, all right, well, let's try it. Um, so I have wow. a little goal. Um, I want to make a certain amount with licensing. Some of that is in my control. Some of it's not in my control. So really that's just a big question mark for me, but it's where I want to get a percentage of income. Um, and uh, a possible Christmas album. But like I said, I, I'm, that might be too ambitious. So, uh, but like I said, I might start working on it now and, and do it next year. So there are things that I like to have concrete. And then there are things that are okay if they're not accomplished within this time frame. So the, you know, the Christmas album, that's a question mark because I know from experience, 
that I like to uh, put too many things on myself and I will I'll put too many things on my plate. So I want to take the pressure off of myself and say, hey, I would like to do this. I want to do it. My intention is there. I'm going to start doing things toward it. But if I don't release it this year, that's okay. I'm not taking the pressure off because right. I have a plan for how I'm going to still get to my revenue goal via the other uh, mediums. Right. But at least you're moving, you're doing stuff. And I, I like the fact that you, you're breaking, you're breaking these things into categories. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not all mixed up together, which can obviously easily happen, but the more you can keep these distinctions in your mind, I think it's a lot easier right. for you to, to do that. Right. And so the, actually the, the list, if you guys want to know, I have uh, revenue releases, projects, and personal. These are all different categories of goals. And I think we're going to have a download for this so you guys can download it and get uh, you know, a plan to go along with this. So you can do this. And again, doesn't matter what time of year this is. This is a good thing to do every quarter. And I like to do it annually as well. So annual is like the big picture. Quarterly is what am I getting accomplished by the end of this 90 days? All right. So what next? What can they do next? They want to break down one of these goals. Yeah. So step two, so step, well, step one was break it, it, break your goals into categories and the revenue releases projects and personal right. step two is make a giant to do list of each of those goals. And basically it's a brain dump of everything, every detail you can think of for each of those goals. So this is where I know a couple of people said they didn't know all the tasks involved. Uh, right. But you don't have to know all the tasks involved. Um, even here at Savvy Musician Academy, when we go to do a promotion or something, a lot of times we don't realize some of the things involved and that there's always 10 extra steps and you thought there was going to be. That's just get used to that. Yeah. So <laughs> just get used just to relax. it. Just relax. Just relax. Exactly. Just relax <laughs> and take a deep breath and just write down everything you can think of because from there, then you can kind of estimate how long each step is going to take. Right. And so then step three would be find out the one big thing that you, that you want to attack and complete in each quarter <clears throat> and which goal is going to be like an ongoing thing. So there's some things that are just ongoing lifestyle things. So like in the, uh, so in like personal goals, if my health is a priority and I'm saying I'm going to work out four days a week, or five days a week or whatever it is, um, that's an ongoing goal. That's not like, oh, I accomplished it. Now I can check it off the list. That one's ongoing. Right. And so, you know, that one's a habit you need to create. And I know you know a lot about habits. Mm -hmm. what, what, in your opinion, what's the best way for people to introduce a new habit? Um, yeah, well, always do things gradual. Always do. Th it's so, again, so much easier to master something in small bites than it is doing something you know, that's at the way people do, they set something that's too ambitious instead of just thinking of something very minor that they can do easily. Cause what has to happen, their mind has to get a taste for accomplishment. And the best way to get a taste for accomplishment is by little victories. You got to win little victories every day. I don't care if it's just cleaning the top of your desk or making your bed, man, you got to mm -hmm. win little victories and you got to make a big deal about it. And so like you, you do this when your kids, right? Your kids, you're trying to get them just to eat their vegetables right? And they won't eat their peas. They won't eat their broccoli. And then finally they do, right? They grab mm -hmm. it on their high chair and they eat their, eat all their peas. Well, you and your husband and everybody's going to say, yay, look at you. You ate your peas. <laughs> you make a big deal about it so that they, so that the coin really drops for them that I feel good every time I get this little thing done every day, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what helps to restore that confidence, which is something that they're really going to need in it, you know, to set this kind of ambitious goals. Yeah, actually, and in, in, in the, uh, on the topic of gradual habits, there's a guy that I'm working with right now. He's helping me with a few things in my music business. And uh, he was telling me he's, a, he's totally into creating habits and doing this gradual thing. And so his, his end goal was to jog a certain distance every day. And so he started out for like oh, a couple of weeks. The only thing he did was put on his shoes. That was it. <laughs> And then, and then the next step was like going halfway down the stairs and then back. That was it. Okay. You know, if he had gone down the stairs, then he had done it. And his friends would joke. They're like, Oh, did you make it all the way down to the staircase yet? Right. And, um, 
And then soon enough, you know, over time, it's, he said, I think he said it took him like a year or whatever to actually like jog the full distance that he said he wanted to. Now that's pretty, pretty extreme, but it's a great, and we were laughing about it and everything, but he, great example of just like, Hey, he wanted to drill it into his brain and like positive association and just like one small thing at a time. Uh, And he didn't just say, wake up one day, throw on his shoes and jog 10 miles out of the gate and like die (laughs) and then never do it again. Right. Cause that was so unrealistic so like way too ambitious and didn't you know warm his body up to that whole thing and his brain and, and drill it in so i liked that a lot i thought it was funny well you know there's a, a, a phrase that you and i have probably both used i know you know what it means but progressive dominion you know that you just dominion meaning the governorship of your little realm your little empire your, you know where your 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 land is you you have to take that control or that governorship of it progressively. You can't do it all at once. It's too much. I mean, the essence, the, the, the mark of maturity is responsibility, right? That's the mark of maturity. When you raise your kids, what, how do you deem them to be mature? When they're responsible, mm-hmm. right? So that's what we are all, when we want to grow to become that fully mature business person, that mature musician, It's when we're taking responsibility for all of these different things in our life. And it just doesn't come overnight. You didn't get to the, to the place you're at overnight. You're certainly not going to get out of it overnight, but if you can get your head out of the way and just accept that this is the way life is, and you can start taking those little bites. I mean, as soon as you finish listening to this show, you can go win a little victory. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yes. That's how powerful you are, man. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Um, so when you figured out which are the goals that you can actually complete and check off your list and which ones are actually ongoing lifestyle habits that you need to adopt, um, you need to determine which big goal is your battle. That's what we call it. Um, we call the big goal is the battle and the little tasks associated with getting to that goal are the little sprints that are going to get you there. And so for that, you definitely want to use a 90 day time frame. If any more than that, and I think they've said that it's it, it is really not helpful and not realistic to go beyond 90 days. 90 days, you're I think your entire in fact all the cells in your body turn over in 90 days, I believe, or maybe it's less than that. It's in some short period of time, all your your whole body can be completely transformed. So you're a completely different person every 90 days because yeah. all your cells change. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So if you get if you do something now that's a crime and you get arrested and yeah. they'll take you to take you to trial for three months. You could say it wasn't it's not me. me. <laughs> it's the guy from three months ago. It's not yeah. me. Oh, a totally different person. Never stop in, You never step into the same river twice, right? <laughs> there you go. Yes. So um, ninety day time frames are going to be really important. And the next thing is, I want to help you by giving you a few tools. Uh, tools that I, that I recommend to help you just plan this out. Guys, none of this stuff is rocket science. It's actually very easy, very elementary. It's just a matter of you sitting down and doing it. And then we can talk about implementation, but um, I I just recommend doing all of this. I mean, your brain dumps are going to be on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard or whatever you want. But then when you get serious and you, you define the goal, you define the habits that needs to go into some kind of a tool like an Excel spreadsheet or my favorite is Airtable. You can get a free account there. Airtable is like Excel on steroids. Like you can actually color code. I love that thing. And I don't, and I hate Excel. I'm allergic to spreadsheets. So if I like Airtable, you guys are going to love Airtable. Um, And we use it a lot in our elite program. So my entire uh, album launch was in an Airtable. So with color coded and who is doing what and all the tasks and guess what? I gave that air table to our students. So they have the entire spreadsheet of everything I did in my launch. So those are the kind of perks, but um, you know, in your air table or your, your Excel spreadsheet, what's really important, especially if you're in a band situation is once you have the battle and then you have the sprints in the battle, you need to assign an owner. Somebody has to own each task. So if you're in a group situation, you need to determine who is doing what, what are the roles in your band? What are the roles? Or if you're a duo or a husband, wife duo, we have lots of those. Um, 
who is doing what, who is responsible for the success or failure of that task. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not other people involved in the task, but somebody has to own it. So in Airtable, you can have uh, different participants in there and so you actually tag that person and they see that they are assigned to that task. You can use Asana or whatever, whatever other right. you know, organization thing you wanna use. And it, the tool doesn't matter. What matters is that you're doing this and that you assign owners and roles and responsibilities. Let me just take this as a note um, because I know you and I, we've talked about this, the issue of personality profiles and these sorts of things. You know, you can have a situation in a band where just one person, maybe the one who started the band, just feels like they have to do it all. And so they're not empowering necessarily the other players, the other people that are involved that could, you know, that might be more gifted, for example, to do other tasks. And I know this is obviously not the subject to this particular podcast. We can probably talk about these things at another time, but that's going to be imperative, isn't it? When you start assigning tasks and this sort of stuff, you get other people involved in this. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about teamwork. Yeah. And actually there's a free quiz that I would really recommend everybody taking, especially if you are in a uh, band and you want other people involved. And um, they're the guy is named Les McEwen and he wrote a book called The Synergist and Predictable Success. It's definitely like a business corporate-ish type thing. But the, the free quiz that he has called The Synergist Quiz is so insightful and it really just tells you how people are wired in, in their giftings, especially in a cooperative setting or a business setting. Um, I personally found it extremely useful even for marriage because mm -hmm. You know, I, I learned that marriage is a business. Yeah. <laughs> marriage is yeah. a corporation. Well, it is an entity, I guess, but well, whether the old old saying marriage is an institution, but who institution. Wants to, yeah. Who wants that, to live in an institution? Yeah, that's that sounds pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean it helped I found out, hey, this is where I found out that I didn't know this beforehand, but I am a visionary to the max. Like it's so there's four different I'll just go over this real quick, but there's four different uh uh personalities or leadership styles is what they call it right. leadership styles um, there's the visionary there's the operator there's a processor and the synergist and of course you're usually a blend of all of them right. uh, to some degree but if you and your bandmates can take this or your husband or wife or whatever they can take this it will really give you so much insight into you know who they are and the way they're wired and what they should and shouldn't be doing so i found as a visionary you know it's not that i can't do some processing tasks which would be you know excel spreadsheets for example sure. uh, or operating which is you know managing people and you know doing the to-do list actually making the things happen um it's not that i can't do those things it's that they drain me of energy and then my energy is so much better focused in the visionary role where i'm coming up with new ideas I'm learning, constantly learning. If I don't have something new to learn, I am not very happy in life. I have right. to, I need right. new stimulation constantly. Yeah, I'm exactly that way. Yeah. So I'm always reading. I'm always learning. I'm in some course. I'm, I have a mentor at all times. Like I've got something going on right. where I'm learning. So I just realized that's me, but not every creative musician is a visionary either. We have people right. who are high processors. We did this in our league group where everybody put their, uh, their uh, leadership style. And it was such a cool blend to see like, wow, we got some lots of visionaries for sure. But there was some that um, who were doing very well with their music. We're not visionaries. Great. Right. That means that you, wanna, you want uh, somebody else in your band who is the visionary to do certain things. And this right. is where I think um, we really need to do a whole episode just on this topic because it's, yeah, so it's very, what a liber liberating thing it is to know, you know, that you're not gifted for something and that's okay. It's okay that you're not gifted for that. You know, sometimes stress, stress can come from two sources. Either you are extending, overextending your personality, right? To do something you're not necessarily gifted to do, that can cause stress. But then also holding yourself back from being who you are can cause you stress. You know, so if you are that visionary person and you don't have that ability to mind dump and get that out there, that's going to cause you stress. But then if you're the visionary and you have to do all the Excel spreadsheets, yes, <laughs> that's going to cause you stress. So we, again, take that quiz because I think uh, it'll be it, very eye opening. And, and like she said, we'll do, we'll do an episode, talk more about this in detail. Exactly. So it's Synergist Quiz. Uh, if you Google Synergist Quiz and we'll put it in the show notes. Last time I looked, they were doing a website 
update. So it wasn't there, but it'll, I'm sure it'll be back because it's great. And I really have learned so much. And if you can read the book, The Synergist, it's really great. Cool. Um, so from there, um, how do you make it all happen? You know, you, let's say you put all these goals and you divide it into, you know, what are the big annual goals in your spreadsheet? And then what are the quarterly goals? Okay. In, cor- in Q1. So Q1 is the, it's every three months, right? So there's three months in one quarter. So January, February, March is Q1. And then April, May, June is Q2. And, and then, you know, the rest. So figure out what are you going to do every 90 days? And you can even label that in your spreadsheet. So January to March, what's happening in those three months and break it down into the smaller little things, assign who it is that's going to take care of that. And so I think it's important to have some deadlines Um, Not to put pressure on yourself, but just to keep you on track. So when people were asking, how do I make sure that I actually do it? I'm struggling with follow through. I think having a system of accountability. And um, of course, you have to be accountable to the accountability system. Like you have to make yourself be accountable to that. Nobody can do that for you. Um, And so then you're dealing with a motivation problem at that point, if you are still struggling, I think. Yeah, simply making a deadline can be a very, very powerful mental tool, even though nobody's putting a gun to your head and forcing you to do it, you're going you're gonna to get tired of disappointing yourself for not showing up when you do it. It is a great mind tool. I always teach the people that procrastination is actually a weird way of us getting something done. In other words, who doesn't say, I work better under pressure, right? Everybody says that I work better under pressure. Yeah, because So that's why you put something off because you know that day of judgment is eventually coming and you're going to scramble and get that thing happen. So it's procrastination is actually a weird way of getting something done. You don't have to do that. You can bring that line, that demarcation of pressure up a little closer by simply doing what she just said, putting down some deadlines. Great. Yeah. So quarterly deadlines, that's really going to help. And then how do you make it happen? Let's say you've got a bunch of things on the go. Well, um, I constantly have a bunch of things on the go and I can tell you, I, I get stressed out. I get overwhelmed. And sometimes I think a little too easily because I do this to myself. And this is, this is one of my flaws is putting too much on my plate at once. And because, you know, we don't just, I'm not just as a coach here at Savvy Musician Academy. I also have my music career, which is always going and growing and, you know, I'm doing new hires and, and I'm changing warehouses right now and doing new merch. There's, there's a lot happening all at once. And then, you know, I kind of have five kids also. (laughs) Oh yeah. And them too. (laughs) And them too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you you could say I have my moments where I'm just like, holy cow, you know, man. And the best thing to do is I, you want in this situation, leaning on the routines, leaning on the schedule, leaning on those morning, evening things and like eating the same, I eat the same thing every day. Um, I, I don't have a lot of clothing options. Like I wear the same stuff, you know, right. taking out some of that decision fatigue can right. really, really help. Yes. And, and then sticking to the daily routine. So how do you make it happen? Well, it has to be scheduled into your habit. So when are you working on these tasks that you've now put into your Excel spreadsheet. It's got to be factored in, put it in your schedule. If you're not using your calendar, now is the time to start using your calendar, right. setting reminders and stuff. Yeah. In fact, dealing with you guys, <laughs> I'm always getting introduced to another app. Yeah. Hey, we're doing this over here on this app and on this app and this app. So I'm like, Oh well, my goodness, man, I'm learning. I learned more about just the different apps available from working with Leah's group, Leah's team. Yeah. We love tools. Um, we've, and CJ, we've simplified things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, I'm getting the simple version. Yes. We've simplified things. Um, and just, just for fun, if, if anyone's curious, we were using Basecamp as our team organization platform. It's actually pretty expensive. Um, right. It's a cool, it's a cool app, but it's pretty expensive. We do everything in Airtable now. Yeah. So like all of our organizations, we have, we have lots of bases in there. So each base is its own basically spreadsheet thing. But within that spreadsheet, you can do lots of tabs. So we do all of our organization in, in wow. Airtable and we use, you know, a cloud organizer. We were on, on Dropbox, but now we're on pCloud. And between that and then just Slack for communication, that's, and Voxer, we use Voxer a lot. Royce 
It's like a little walkie talkie app. Yeah. If you have a band, you got to get Voxer. It's fun. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a little walkie talkie app and it's, it's faster than texty texting. It's also just fun to use. Um, yeah. Facebook messenger can do the same thing, but I find it more glitchy. So, um, but you know, there's lots of these apps that work well for communication. Um, you know, yeah, even WhatsApp also works. So the point is use tools that enhance you and that don't distract you and don't make it more difficult. The whole idea is to simplify and make it efficient. Right. My thing, I have a thing about efficiency uh, and I didn't realize. So if you do the Myers-Briggs, mm -hmm. I don't know if you put much cadence on that one or not, but I'm the ENTJ. And um, apparently we're all about efficiency. It said that my, I, I should be like a judge or a, some kind of military uh, official. Oh, really? <laughs> Drop goodness. down and give me 20 right now. All right. Judge Judy or General Schwarzkopf, one of the two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm like that with efficiencies. And I re when I see disorganization, and this is, and even as a visionary, you think a visionary would be like super messy. I think a lot of visionaries are total neat freaks. And yeah. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm a healthy blend of the two. It's like, I, I like my, I have, some organized messes, but I don't like seeing disorganization. That is overwhelming to me emotionally and mentally. Right. So, um, I'm I'm not I'm not a complete neat freak, but I have seen some visionary neat freaks. So, anyways, um, making sure that you have tools that are helping you in your planning, not hindering you. So, mm -hmm. use Google Docs. Evernote is great if you want to do your yeah. brain dumps in Evernote. I use Evernote all the time. Mm -hmm. Airtable or Excel. Have some kind of uh, organization platform like Asana, Trello, or just use Airtable like we do, free project management app, anything like that is going to help. And then you need weekly or and definitely monthly meetings with yeah. your band. I think there's the other, there's one aspect that I actually didn't put in my notes here and that's the communication part of it. Mm, yeah. I think it's probably more important than almost anything else. Yeah. Uh, aside from the planning itself is communicating all of this. Right. Um, so you know, having a big annual planning meeting is really, really important. So we do that. Um, again, I do that in, in my music business and in Savvy Musician Academy. Everything I do in, in SMA, I do for my music business. Right. And that's how I've grown it because it's the right. same. Right. So you guys should do the same. Have an annual planning meeting, have a quarterly planning meeting, and then have weekly meetings. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's one of the things that I, I try to tell people when we're talking about this subject and I bring you up, you know, and I just say, you know, she, what you're getting when what she teaches is not, it's not like she's teaching you some, you know, garbage or old stuff or whatever. And, and she does something secret. No, she's, she's literally giving you what she does. And so when she tells you use this app, it's because she just tried 15 others <laughs> and pulled her hair out. And so this is the one that she's saying for right now is the best one. Now she may mm -hmm. hate Airtable next year. I don't know, but for right now, you better <laughs> try Airtable. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. One thing you can know about me is I definitely try and test a lot of stuff and um, I've wasted more money than I care to admit <laughs> I'm trying things, including Spotify ads. Um, <laughs> oh, well, that, that's another, hey, I'll give that update in another episode about that. Cause I, in a previous episode, I said I was trying it. Okay. And yeah, let's just say that it's nothing compared to Facebook. They do not have targeting yeah. down. They do not have like detailed targeting or detailed metrics either. Ooh, so no, waste no, your money. no. Well, that was awesome. Um, and again, folks, I, I, I really hope, you know, I know this, it can sound like a lot. We obviously talked about a lot here, Leah, but again, go back to what she said. It's, it, it is about simplifying things. It is about not getting all worked up about it just because we can, I think, Leah, become neutralized just by the, that sense of overwhelm. And so we end up doing nothing. And that's, that is not the goal. The goal is to get you moving forward. So just what's the one action step you want to leave them with? It doesn't, not necessarily about the goal setting, or, but the, you know, how do they need to connect, you know, moving forward? I know you've got the Savvy Musician Mastermind, which is your free group, correct? Yeah. You know, I would say, I mean, you summarize it really well and Hey, start moving forward in a general direction and then you're going to refine it over time. And if we can help you get more specific and give you more advice and guide you and lead you along the way, we would certainly be privileged to do that. We've been working with thousands of musicians 
and they're seeing tremendous results and improvement. And some of these are people who have never made a dime in their music in their entire life and are starting to do it now. And so um, wherever you're at, whether you are a musician, you've been doing this for decades and you've been touring and you're doing all of that and you want to add an online aspect to your music, we'd be privileged to help you do that. Um, or you are somebody who has not yet launched an album yet and you're just getting started. Um, you know, there's a place for everybody here. Um, the best thing is to join our free Facebook group. Um, definitely subscribe to this podcast because yes. you're, I mean, this is, we're, we're taking this up a few notches, CJ and I. So right. uh, you're going to get some more regular content from us. If you found this valuable, I would love it if you left us a review. Mm -hmm. Give us a rating. Be honest. We want your real opinion. Leave us a review. And that's be honest a, about those five stars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and that helps us actually get, um, on the radar in iTunes and these other places that actually helps us um, get the message out there to more people. So um, even if we never work together, that is an amazing way of saying thank you to me and all this free content that we're giving you guys. And um, of course, we'd love to work with you too. go to savvymusicianacademy.com and you can see all the different things that we offer there. That's awesome. Leah, you're awesome. You're the queen of the realm. Thank you so much for sharing just your knowledge and experience and your, I just love the fervency of your spirit. I love the determination. I love the energy. I just love that you bring that to this. The passion is definitely coming through. You didn't grow up your whole life, you know, talking about marketing and things like that, but now it, you sound like somebody who's been doing it their whole life. And that's the best part of, about that. So again, thanks everybody for listening, man. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I have some exciting news for you. If you have been wanting to know how you can crack the code of Spotify and increase your listeners and your monthly followers so that you can create a regular stream of income, this is going to be so exciting. Join the wait list and be the first to know when our new Spotify mini course is live. Go to SavvyMusicianAcademy.com forward slash Spotify. That's SavvyMusicianAcademy.com forward slash Spotify and sign up for the wait list and we will email you as soon as that mini course is live. This is going to be so exciting. I'm very proud to present this to you. This is unlike any other teaching out there and I promise it's going to be worth it. Thanks again for listening today and we'll see you soon.